Hello there, Charger family. This is Mrs. Boyd. Welcome to Mrs. Boyd's Math Room. Today, we're going to talk about parallelograms and uh, the properties that tell us about what they are. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, following lists is a list of the properties of parallelograms. What do we know about opposite sides? We know that they are congruent. So opposite sides, A, B, and D, C are congruent. B, C, and A, D are also congruent. We know the opposite angles are congruent. So A, angle A, and angle C are congruent. Angle D and angle B are also congruent. What do we know about consecutive angles? We know they are, oop, hard to see, sorry, supplementary. Um, let's erase that because no one, no one can see it. So let's fix that really quick. All right, better, hopefully better color. Oh, yeah supplementary consecutive angles are supplementary that means the measure of angle a plus the measure of angle b is going to give us 180. also the measure of angle b plus the measure of angle c also give us 180. so any two angles that are right next to each other down the line, oh, cat on the desk, will uh, give us 180. Next fun property, all if all our right angles, just kidding, all our right angles, if one angle is right. So if angle A is 90, then all of them are 90. This is going to be hard to stomach in some of these cases because not all of our drawings are going to be to scale. So, so I might tell you that something is 90 degrees and it doesn't look like a right angle at all. Um, next, diagonals bisect each other. So if we put a diagonal line, oh, sorry, the cat kicked my, my hand between A and C and a diagonal line, but oh, that one's awful. Okay, try again, between D and B, oh, it's okay. Then A to the center and C to the center are the same length. B to the center and D to the center are also the same lengths. So if we make diagonals from opposite angles, then those bisect each other. Last but not least, diagonals create two congruent triangles. So if I put a diagonal between A and C, I've got two triangles. One is ADC and one is ABC. And these are congruent. And that AD is congruent to BC. DC is congruent to AB. And AC is the same for both triangles because it's the same line. So we can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle C. D, A. Remember, the order of those letters matters. Okay, so now that we've done a little legwork into defining what it means to be a parallelogram, we're going to put some number values with some of these things. Um, all right. First, we've got 5x for one side, 21, 3.5x, and 10y. Well, since we know that um, opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, we can say that 21 equals 3.5x. So we can divide both sides by 
and get six equals x. So we know x equals six. Um, we also wanna know y. So we can say five x equals 10 y, but we know x already. So we can plug our six in for x. Five times six is 30, and that equals 10 y. We divide both sides by 10 and we get y is three. And those are our two variables. We can say the same thing about opposite angles are congruent. We can say seven X equals 56 and divide by seven and get X is eight. And we can say 6.2 Y equals 124. Divide by 6.2 to get Y alone. And Y is 20. Now we know that for this uh, parallelogram, we know that consecutive angles equal 180. So let's just deal with the two consecutive angles that include X's first. We've got 7x plus x plus 6 is 180. We can combine like terms on the left. 8x plus 6 is 180. Uh, subtract 6 from each side. And we get 8x equals 174. Divide by 8 and x is 21.75. We can use a calculator for that one. Now we gotta find y. So we can say 10y equals seven x because they're opposite angles and they're congruent. So 10y equals seven times 21.75 or 10y equals 152.25 divide by 10 and we get y is 15.225. Ran out of room there, sorry guys. Um, moving on, last couple here. We know here that if one angle, <laughs> cat's playing in the background, sorry. One angle is 90, all the angles are 90. So 15x equals 90. We divide by 15 and X is six. <laughs> uh, and 4.5 Y is 90. Divide by 4.5 and we get Y is 20. Next, we know that if we make um, diagonals through each angle, then they are bisectors of each other. So we can say that 4x squared equals 28. Divide by 4 and we get x squared is 7. Well, we need to take the square root of each side to get rid of that square. And x is the square root of 7. Uh, we also say that 10 equals y squared plus 1. We get y all alone. Y squared is nine. We take the square root of each side. That means Y is plus or minus three. Either plus or minus three. The last problem on here, I don't really want you to worry about. We talk about the Pythagorean theorem with this one. And we really haven't discussed that yet. So as soon as we discuss Pythagorean theorem, we'll probably come back to this problem. Um, and look at it again. So for now, we're gonna leave it here. Um, I hope you're amazing, you know how to reach me if you have any questions, and I hope to see you very soon.